Okay, hit me. What what question do you have? Let's have a look. So if anyone comes up with anything else, feel free to put them in now. Teresa says, so true. The main focus on operations is to get operations back on track. By the time the investigation is signed and sealed, it's too late and we've moved on. Right. Which is super normal. I mean, that's super normal. And you're exactly right. The main focus is let's get back to business. You're really seeing it. I'm seeing it in the companies that are coming back now, uh, at least in the United States, they're coming back around and they want to go back to the way things used to be. So the crazy question is, is the way things used to be the right place to go? And my answer, this is kind of naive because I don't work where you work, but you do, is that where you were before the crisis happened, and the crisis could be the pandemic, it could be the economic shuttle, it could be an accident, it could be an injury, was the system you had before the event happened the right system? And the quick answer to that is, is probably no. So let me tell a quick story, Elliot, because it just happened the other day. Uh, um, a guy wrote me an email, and it was really serious, and, and he was really pretty excited about it. I've known this guy for a long time. And he said, um, Todd, did you know that when an accident happens, the probability of that accident happening is almost zero? And yet it happened. And I wrote him back. I thought about it a while. And I wrote him back and I said, when an accident happens, the probability of that accident happening is not zero. It's one. It happened. So the idea that somehow uncertainty is busting out of our prediction, that's a really interesting idea and probably not very effective. Ultimately, we want to be able to predict failure so we don't have to learn. The problem is, is that we can't really predict failure until after it happens, and that's when the learning is at, at its richest. Excellent. So we've uh, also, we've got, uh, it's quite interesting, actually, because you've created a, a huge amount of discussion on the chat, we've got Dan Platten here saying, lesson learnt, we need a step change to the wider h &S industry, like the aviation industry have done. Yeah. They share their black boxes with a common yeah. goal, a global goal. We don't have a global h &S industry to enable us to learn more effectively. And that's created quite a, a chat. Yeah, and that's a really, so no wonder, that's a really good thing to chat about. And that's because that we don't have the same reciprocity need in industry that aviation does. So when one plane crashes and kills a lot of people, that impacts all planes. Every airline, no matter where they are, is impacted by that. And so they've learned really early that the reciprocity across the, the competitive aisle, that's really valuable operationally. Now, there's a couple of reasons we don't do that. One is the classic competition model. And remember, we coming from a world that was optimized towards efficiency, shareholder value, and we're moving to a world that's optimized towards resilience. So you're going to see an opportunity for more of these conversations. But the bigger driver, and I bet you talked about this a bunch today, Elliot, is blame. Blame tends to make learning not as important. Because if you can find a place where a bad worker did a bad thing, then you think your learning's done. I've learned everything I need to learn. I know everything I need to know. Uh, we have to sort of get beyond classic root cause analysis thinking in, into a much more holistic systems thinking of how failure happens. But I, I think that's a challenge for us in health and safety to become much more collective in our learning and to understand that what benefits one benefits all. Excellent. Yeah. And so just to wrap it up, we've got the final few questions here. So Martin Robbins says, great presentation, Todd. We are all coming to terms with the idea that being physically present won't always be possible or capable of being relied on as a resolution to an event or a particular failure. In your opinion, the COVID scenario will be a catalyst for the focus on the tools that enable us to reduce harm by removing the frequently or need to be physically present in hazardous environments to address failures as a priority based on establishment in practice in the old normal. So absolutely, that's, a, that's an incredibly um, thoughtful question. Absolutely. And what we're learning, we're, we're learning this with all types of risk. So we're learning this. So I was just on the phone yesterday 
with an organization that was leasing quite a bit of office space because they'd run out of room. Then the pandemic happened, everybody worked at home, and there was a great realization that all this expensive office space they've been renting is not really necessary. They're getting the same amount of work done and they're getting it done at home. And so let's not bring these people back to the office. And that the reason I was on the phone is that discussion was really controversial and scary as hell to people, right? That same idea, I think we can extrapolate quite normally to high-risk operations. And you'll see an increase in automation. You'll see a decrease in the presence of actually people being there. But I think the most important learning out of this is really the ability to bounce these processes forward. That the, the opportunity to actually do some things that would have been unthinkable a year ago. We, we probably just, we couldn't even have gotten the, the leadership team to pay attention to us. Now, actually, that discussion is probably not only welcomed, but incredibly important to have. And that's where we are. We're in a position where we can bring our operations to a place, at least from our little vantage point of the world, where we're bouncing beyond a, a brittle old system that was guaranteed to have high consequence failure to a much more modern resilient system that's got some flexibility in it and some capacity. Amazing. So we've uh, just the last couple of questions just before we wrap up. So we've got one here from James McPherson it says the comment around risk assessment has my brain ticking. So if I understood right, essentially, the issue is that our risk assessments is that they ask the question, will it happen when they should ask when it happens? Do we have the capacity to deal with it? So we do. And that's and James, you're exactly right. So we, we've managed risk based upon probability. And probability is really tricky because before something happens, it hasn't happened. But after it's happened, the probability is 100%. So instead of managing based upon probability, what we've done in aviation, there's lots of places I could, I could show you tons of them, is we've actually moved the probability to 1% to 100%. And we've moved that question from if this happens to when this happens. And that's really allowed us to remove some of the uncertainty in predicting the future. So we know this just because we're living through a pandemic, but we could not have predicted what happened. I mean, we just couldn't have predicted it. If I had told you, you're going to spend two months in your house, not leaving, you would have looked at me like I was crazy. But, and yet you, you just did it, right? And the possibility of predicting that was really low until it happened. And then there was no prediction left. It happened. That ability to manage uncertainty based upon certain controls demands that we change the language around risk assessment, at least as it relates to resilience and capacity. Amazing. So I think that is near enough everything. I'm apologize if I have missed anything from anyone, but there's there's tons of comments. I heard loads of people saying, great idea. Thank you so much, Todd. So I think it's really hit home to a lot of people. So thank you very much, Todd. It's been excellent to uh, to have you hosting here. It's been so much fun to hang out with you guys. Bounce forward, you guys. Watch what happens the next time we talk. I'm really curious um, what's changed. The question I'd want to ask you is, what'd you get rid of? Because there's just a lot of stuff I think we can get rid of. And that'll be fun to watch. Thanks, Elliot. No problem. And obviously, uh, guys watching, we have Todd uh, speaking at the HSC UK Congress, hopefully in February. That's the 9th and 10th. You're more than welcome to register now on the HSE Global Series website. Uh, but for now, thank you very much, Todd. <laughs>